Hope you are doing well today. Welcome to Simply Home and Harvest. Well, today is Tuesday here. And since it's Tuesday, I woke up this morning trying to figure out what we were gonna have for dinner. And I was thinking, well, let's just do Taco Tuesday. That'll be easy. And so today I am using what I have on hand. And so I'll show you that I've already got my oil going back here in my pot. And I've got it over low heat right now, and that's because we're gonna run out to the garden and gather some things. But I'm heating up this oil back here in this pot because I'm gonna make Spanish rice. And this is a recipe that my cousin's husband shared with me. Um, he brought it for our Christmas uh, dinner this past year. And we always do a Mexican theme because we have some gluten-free family members. So he brought that and it was absolutely amazing. And I said, you've got to share the recipe with me. So I'm using that recipe today. It's become a favorite. And I'm going to show you how to do that so that you can add that to maybe your Taco Tuesday. Uh, also, I'm going to brown up some of our hamburger meat here. Um, we got this locally, but you can use any hamburger meat that you have on hand. All right, well, let's head down to the garden and see what we can find to add to this yummy dinner. We're taking a shortcut through the downstairs so I can uh, check on our little chicks. Let me flip the camera around and show you. All right, here they are. They're in their little indoor brooder. They're, they were resting until I started talking and then they perked up. But we took them outside today to give them a little fresh air and let them explore a little bit. They really are enjoying going outside. And we had to put the top on our box here because they were flying out and we were chasing them all over our basement. This is the unfinished side of our basement, which, you know, we're still trying to keep them contained because they make messes when they get out. So anyway, they're enjoying, they got plenty of room and they got their water and their food and they're as happy as they can be. Um, but we did take them out today and we've been taking them out a little bit every day just to, to let them get some fresh air. Like I said, explore. We've got their, their brooder is sitting out. We'll put that back in for, um, bedtime. That's all the only time that, um, we have them under it now is just at night because they've gotten big enough they're about we've had them for about three and a half weeks so i think they're probably a good four to five weeks old and um, pretty soon they'll be outside but not quite yet they still have a, at least a couple more weeks maybe more before they out there they are out there full time Freeze, Alex. Okay, it's all good now. You can unfreeze. Her. Okay, you can unfreeze. Game's over. Hey. All right, good. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. So I'm going to have to hurry up and get what I need because I thought I felt a few raindrops and looked up, and that's what's over my head. So let's hurry up. In that time of year now where the garden is still producing, but you know, things are starting to slow down because it's it's coming to an end. Summer, har summer harvest is coming to an end and the fall garden will be in full swing soon, but we are still very blessed to be getting what we're getting out of it. Here's a quick look at our sweet potatoes really filling in the space. If you saw my video from last week, you'll remember this little gap where the cucumbers were and so there's almost no sign of cucumbers there. But the sweet potatoes have really uh, filled that space in nicely, and that's what we want them to do. Then over here on this side, our pumpkins are starting to spread out. And before you know it, they're going to look like the sweet potatoes over there. So that's what they look like. They're growing a lot. And then we have our squash. We've got one in here I could probably grab out for dinner. Well, I think we'll let that one hang out for a little bit longer, get a little bit bigger. And literally hear the rain coming so ooh, oh we got all kinds of bugs on this one i was gonna grab this corn up here let's see okay got that out we'll have at least hopefully enough corn on this that we can just scrape off 
and have to go with our rice for dinner. I think I want to grab this tomato off. Use that one, that's a pretty one right there. Or maybe we'll just take this one in and hold it for something else and use one of our aromas. That might be a better idea. We're gonna grab a pepper. See if we can do this with one hand, there we go. Okay, we beat the rain. Good thing I brought my apron out here. I could hold all the vegetables so I would have to carry them in my hands. All right, let's get cooking. So I have to show y'all something because I need proof of this on video. If you've been watching my, oh, there's a little buggy. If you've been watching my videos um, over the past few weeks, you know that I have been so disappointed in the corn I have pulled off the stalks that we've been growing because they look beautiful on one side and then you flip them around and they've got nothing on the back side. They just didn't mature. So I haven't really been too excited to pull corn lately, um, especially because it really didn't look that great on the outside. You saw when we went to pick it just now, there were bugs all over it. So I was just certain that it would be rotten on the inside. Well, look at this. Would you just look at that? We have a full ear of corn. How about that? I'm so excited that I really want to run outside and pull all the rest of them off the stalks, but you know, we got that storm and all rolling in. So I just don't know. I don't know if I want to scrape the corn off this because it's so pretty. I think I'm going to stick this in the fridge in hopes that tomorrow I can pull more off that look like this and we can have ourselves corn on the cob. Can we just take a minute to rejoice? I am so thankful for this full corn. Yay. I know y'all probably think that's funny, but we have worked hard and waited patiently for that full ear of corn. So that's an exciting, I'm just, that's, that's just good news, good news. Okay, back to our Spanish rice. We have our oil that's heating and I've got it over medium heat and we may have accidentally cooked it a little bit. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. All right, to that, we're gonna add one cup of uncooked rice. We're just gonna pour that right into our oil and stir that up and we're gonna brown that. I'm probably gonna have to move the camera so you can see it a little better. Okay, that's a better angle. So we're going to get that, all the, that rice looks like it's already soaked all of that um, oil up, but we're gonna have enough to brown it, I believe. If not, we'll add more in there. So we're gonna cook and you just stir it constantly until it's puffed and golden, and it says. We'll just keep stirring that until we get it puffed and golden. All right, over on this side, we're gonna go ahead and get our ground beef in our pan here. We got that heated. It's still a tad bit frozen. Not too much. I just love the color of fresh ground beef that you buy locally. I don't know that. I mean, the difference to me is just the way it cooks is amazing. Um, but of course, you buy and you use what you can get. I'm thankful that we have this on hand. But ground beef from the grocery store, probably the leaner, the better for a recipe like this. That's what you can use. Or you could use chicken. That works too. In fact, I've got some rotisserie chicken in the fridge that I will probably heat up because some of my family members prefer chicken over the beef when we have taco night. So I'll probably do that. Okay, at this point, now that we've got our rice puffed and it's golden, we're gonna add just a little pinch of salt to it. We're also going to add some garlic powder. And the recipe calls for about one teaspoon. I'm just gonna eyeball it there. Do so y'all know that every time I pull out my camera to film and do a cooking video, a storm rolls up lately? I don't know what it is, but we have definitely had our share of rain and summer, summer storms in the evening this summer. Hopefully we will keep our power. We've been very fortunate the last few times. So hopefully nothing will change there. All right, we're gonna also add in some onion powder because you could add chopped onion to this, but if you've been watching my channel, you know my husband does not like any kind of chopped onions, or he got onion for that matter, in his dishes. So 
we will leave that out so that he can enjoy this as well. You could also add cumin to this. I don't have any on hand. So I am going to add this Southwest Chipotle seasoning. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that in there and I'm pretty sure that's got cumin in it. It's got some chili powder in it too. And that's what we're gonna use. Using what we have there. Oh yeah, I can smell the cumin. Definitely has it in there. Okay, now that we've got that stirred in, we are going to add our tomato sauce. So we're gonna do half a cup of tomato sauce. there and then we're also going to add our chicken broth. That'll calm it down a little bit. There we go. I got y'all way close to the action tonight. So I'm sure you felt that. You probably felt the heat come off that when I added in the sauce. I'll have to clean my lens now. I'm still getting the hang of this recording and cooking thing. All right, that was two cups of chicken broth. So we're going to bring that to a boil. And then while that's coming to a boil, we're gonna go over here and see how our ground beef is coming. All right, that's looking good too. And I'm not gonna add taco seasoning to this. It's there again. Some of these picky people I live with, <laughs> <laughs> they don't like taco seasoning in the meat, so we just, most of the time, I mean, sometimes I'll sneak some sneeze, seasoning in there, but most of the time, I just go ahead and just cook. Uh, I do season the meat, um, salt and pepper, or some sort of, some other kind of meat seasoning, but I don't put the taco seasoning in the meat very often. And we just season our own the way we like it individually. So we'll let that cook for a little bit longer. And our rice is coming to a boil. Now that that is coming to a boil, we will reduce our heat to a medium low. And we're gonna cover it and let it simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, so I am gonna season our meat a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of Himalayan salt to that. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of our black cracked peppercorn. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of onion powder and some garlic powder. And that will season it a pretty good amount. Also using my mix and chop. Sometimes I forget that I have this handy tool. All right, our hamburger is completely cooked all the way through. So we're just going to turn this down to low, let that hang out until everything is finished.
a little bit more about this in just a few minutes when I show you how to save some other seeds. But seed saving has become very important to me in the last couple of years. And most especially because I want to have something to grow each season. And this is just a way that you can preserve the seeds that you are already growing, keep them going for a long time. So in just a few minutes, I'll show you uh, how we saved our lettuce seeds and how you can preserve those for longer. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take our cover off of our pot. It's been cooking for about 20 minutes. Stir that up and see what it looks like. Oh yeah. Yeah, as you can see, it's absorbed all the liquid and it is definitely probably a little bit too cooked. Sticking to the bottom a little bit. But we'll add, maybe we'll add some chicken stock to it just to give it a little bit more moisture, but that looks really good. There you have it, Spanish rice. We didn't even have to go to the store. Okay, so here's tonight's very simple dinner. We've got our Spanish rice. I heated up some rotisserie chicken and our ground beef. And then over here we have our salsa, lettuce, sour cream, tomatoes from the garden, peppers and onions from the garden, our cheese that we shredded, and then snack packs that we need to use up. So I set those out there to have some guacamole. Now some of you might be wondering why we have about two jars of salsa. So I wanted to let you know that one jar is from last year's season of salsa and the other is from this year's season, which is the one that we canned just a few days ago. And someone had asked the question about leaving the peeling on the tomatoes and if it would make the salsa bitter. So I wanted to report back that we tried out both versions and I'm happy to report there is no bitterness. The salsa we can this year is just as delici delicious as last year's, so you can rest easy and keep the peeling on your tomatoes if you would like. color the greens the reds the deep reds and no veggies 
Thank you. Okay, so we are back to doing some seed saving in this clip. And if you will remember, it's been probably a couple of months ago at the very beginning when I showed you the lettuce in the garden that had gone to seed. I had kind of just let it go and let it do its thing. It was growing, it looked terrible, but it was drying out. The flowers were starting to produce on top. And I told you that eventually they would be seeds. And so you can see right there that they've dried up. They've made this little seed ball and that is actually our seed pod. That is where we will get the lettuce seeds from. So I'm gonna pull that off and then I will break it open and show you the inside. Okay, so you can see they break off pretty easy and then all you have to do is just rub them gently between your fingers and the seeds just magically fall out into the palm of your hand. It's so satisfying to get all these little seeds out and to just know that we are going to just, this is just one lettuce plant that went to seed. And in this lettuce plant, I mean, I'm gonna show you today, we probably will get out a hundred seeds. I know there are hundreds in this plant, maybe even a thousand seeds that we could get out. And I won't do all of that right now, but later on when I have some time, I'm gonna sit down and try to get out as many seeds out of this plant as possible. But that's really exciting. That just shows you that we can continue to grow this yummy lettuce. We had a wonderful, wonderful harvest. If you'd like to go back and watch some of the videos, I'll leave them down below um, where you can see how we harvested the lettuce. And in fact, just last week, I was still getting a little bit of lettuce here and there. I'm letting it continue to grow and the sweet potato vines are taken over, but it's actually shading it enough where it's starting to produce again. And I am planning to uh, grow some in the fall because I've loved having the lettuce. Uh, so, you know, having fresh lettuce every day for salads and everything that's been wonderful. But anyway, you see what we got just out of that little pod. I'm catching it on a piece of wax paper and then um, we're going to gather all the seeds and we'll put them into some paper envelopes in just a second. Okay, now that we've gathered all of the seeds that we're going to save tonight, we'll go ahead and get those into a small paper envelope. These are just some seed envelopes that I ordered off of Amazon. I will link that in the description box below so that you can uh, buy some of those if you'd like. And the reason that I use paper is because it will preserve them for longer. With paper, you don't have a lot of the moisture that can get in like you do if you save your seeds in Ziploc bags. And they're supposed to last longer using this method. So we'll go ahead and get this one labeled. This is our Butter Crunch Lettuce. And I'll go ahead and put the day at the bottom so I will know uh, what year and even month that these were saved. You'll see that I also saved some purple bell peppers and the tomatoes that we are saving from tonight's tomato. Those are delicious tomatoes. I will get those in an envelope as well and we'll have those for next year. Well, I know that was a really quick and easy meal and probably one that most of you could throw together without a video, but I did want you to have that Spanish rice recipe because it really is a very simple dish that you can throw together in really no time. And it uses a lot of ingredients that you probably already have on hand in your kitchen. So hopefully if you are in a bind or you need a quick dinner or it's Tuesday and you really want to have a Taco Tuesday night, this will give you some ideas on how you can get it done and get it done quickly. So I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. I hope that um, you are enjoying all the videos. If you are, I'd love to have you subscribe and join this community and give this video a like if you'd like to see more. 
Until next time, remember to live simply, use what you have, and enjoy the moments you've been given. Apparently, Alex freaked them out. Now they're knocking on the door to see if somebody <laughs> let them in their house. I don't want to do the sound again because I might scare them really bad. They ring in the doorbell. But I want to do it. Nobody's home. Should I do it again? Let us in. Let us in. Should I do it again? I don't know. This is hilarious. They were, sc they were so yeah, scared. Yeah, Alex scared them. He made a noise and they like all freaked out. And, and they all just huddled up and Now froze. they're knocking on the knocking on their house I'm get back. trying to get back in. <laughs>